Today's pretty exciting for me and I've been waiting a while for this. I finally got to upgrade my tent system for backcountry hunts. In 2011 was the first backcountry hunt that I went on and I bought this Marmot Limelight three-person tent right here. That first hunt, my dad, my brother and I actually went on and my dad and I hunted out of this tent here. And since then, I've been back to Montana a few more times and even went to Colorado on a backpack hunt for elk. And just over the years, this thing has proven to be rather large to try to get in your pack and to carry around. Uh, as far as length, this is about as small as I can get this thing. And then you have the, the big poles in here. I just had this on the scale and it weighs seven pounds, eight ounces. So what I went with for the new system was the Seek Outside little bug out. I went with the base in the vestibule and I have their uh, carbon center pole. I put this one on the scale and I know inside the bag I've opened it up to look at it but I haven't tried to put it up yet. There's some paperwork and there's actually a little tube of uh, their sealant in here for the seams and I put this on the scale and it weighs right in at exactly three pounds. So once I pull that uh, sealant out, get that other stuff out of there, um, it's going to be under three pounds for a, a full shelter system, which is going to be a huge improvement over this seven pound, eight, in, eight ounce, <laughs> what seems like a behemoth now. So I decided to do this video. What I'm going to do is I've never put this tent up before. I've watched some videos on it. Like I said, I had it out of the bag to check things out, but I didn't try to put it up or anything. I'm going to do that here on camera see what kind of difficulties I may run into and uh, we'll even throw it on the timer to see how long it takes me to put this up the first time. I got the camera readjusted. We're gonna get rid of this guy right here and I'm gonna pull up the timer. Got the timer out. We'll hit start and we'll see how long it takes me to get this up. So this carbon tube is four pieces that fold into itself. So you have end up with two, two sections. So there's the center post. It's got adjustment holes up here, so we'll leave it there. That's fully adjusted or that's to the tallest height right now. We'll leave that set because I'm not sure what I'll need. Set the bag aside. Like I said we got some paperwork in here. Stakes, seam sealer, one and a half ounces, so nothing drastic there for weight, but it was weight nonetheless. this out here kind of get it stretched out get an idea of the footprint and see what's what that's pretty good so what I got to look for is the doors I had to come back one stake loop behind the door so I have a door here and I have a door over there Grab two of these stakes. It's been uh, super dry here in, in Pennsylvania this summer, so 
see how these stakes go in. Not too bad. Door there, one stake loop back, and it says to pull it and kind of let it bounce back to a natural distance. And then we're gonna go and do the third stake before we put the pole in. And it is this, this one here right down the seam for the vent and where the stove jack comes through. Haul that seam down, same deal, pull it out, let it spring back. Take that in, and we should be ready to put the pole in, pitch it up and see, see what we got. And I actually had to drop that down. It was pretty tight all the way up, so. We'll go around, stake it out. The rest of the spots. And there we go. Zip it up. See where we're at on the timer. Under seven minutes. Got the 10 all pitched, as you guys saw. Took seven minutes to do it the first time. I know probably every time you do it, you'll get faster and faster. I could already see a couple of things I could probably do a little different. I think maybe I had those back two stakes a little bit too tight when I went to put the pole in. I actually had to uh, make it a little bit shorter uh, to get it in. I think if they were a little closer, I'd be able to extend that pole up and give you a little bit more headroom in there. And then I actually missed uh, two stake loops. They were uh, in between the door opening and the next stake down. Uh, you can see on that side, I put it in after the fact. There's a little bit of a slope and a flat spot there, but it does have those loops right there for some guidelines if you had those on there got some extra stakes you could pull that out and actually make it uh, flare out a little bit give you a little bit more room inside the tent but all in all it's pretty sweet it's awesome that the bag it came in uh, it's not a compression stuff sack I'm sure I can get a small one like that put the uh, stakes in there and get this thing down to probably pretty tiny and then just have the two-piece carbon pole which you could stuff anywhere and you could probably almost lose this thing in your backpack. But uh, I'll grab the camera and take a look around inside. I don't know how well this is going to show up on camera, but I'll try to do my best to give you an idea. I'm obviously sitting where a second person could sleep. I have my, my stuff over here beside me. And uh, down at the vestibule end of the uh, tent, there's a ton of room down there. The stuff you would need in the middle of the night could go behind, right beside you or up above your head packs if you wanted to keep them dry could uh, go down there at the, the foot we'll get it over here you got the door zipped down now so it's enclosed this is gonna be my first time running a floorless shelter and uh, at first first glance or first time I've been in one like this I don't see it being an issue 
Uh, the way this thing tapers out to the side, as long as you're smart about putting this tent up, there shouldn't be any issue with water coming in here. I know for under the pad, I could use a little Tyvek piece uh, to keep the condensation from coming up underneath the pad. A lot of people do that. But as far as not having a, a floor in here and worrying about bugs and critters coming up here, I've had bugs in my other tents before. I mean, come back in the middle of the day, you don't want to have the door doors closed, you open it up, there's stuff coming in. So I don't see that being an issue. Uh, like I mentioned on the outside, there's kind of see them right here through the tent. There are these little guide um, guide loops for some guidelines. Um, if I had those on there, it'd suck the sides out and a couple spots around here and make this even bigger in here. It's actually really nice um, headroom. If you had another person sitting behind here on a pad, they could be doing the same thing sitting up. And uh, I'm just touching here, but it's definitely pretty awesome. There's a lot of room in here for being a shelter that's going to be under three pounds. It's going to be exciting to put this to use. Thanks for watching the video. If you like what you saw, we ask you to please hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell also. You'll be alerted um, every time we post a new video. We're just getting started in this thing. Going to try to dive down into uh, some review videos like this on gear we're getting. And the rest of it's going to be hunting content. So I hope you guys enjoy it. And thanks again for watching.